What's up, Doombots? Tony Skinjili. Another team review. You know how it do. Asgardians. And the reason I'm choosing the Asgardians now is because I've been uh, on my free-to-play account seeing a lot of people with some early game Asgardian characters on uh, arena defense. Even some people in my alliance have been working on them. I've also seen a couple of different people giving advice saying, hey, if you work on the Asgardians early, it'll be great. And I disagree for a lot of reasons, which we will get into through the course of this video. Ultimately, as you guys may remember, I'm going to discuss this in three different sections. The first section is going to be the availability of this team, which is where you're going to understand why this is probably not an early game team. Uh, the usefulness of this team and, of course, breakpoints, how much they require, where their investments uh, will go and... Uh, what the, you can expect from them at certain power levels, uh, including, of course, tier 4 ability materials. We'll get into that. But first, let's kind of see them in action. And it's important to know just why their availability makes them a pretty awful choice as an early game team. Now, the Asgardians' availability in the early game is weird, right? So, starting off, we have two characters that are node farmable, uh, Loki and Hela, neither of which are available for almost any player for the first month or two of the game. Hela is only accessible at the end of the campaign uh, that you need to be level 70 to complete. So, if you can't touch her in the villain campaign, she's not farmable. You can't finish her, right? So you might be able to get her. She's a three-star unlock or 100 shards. But she's not very accessible in early or mid-game. So working on her early, even if you do happen to get lucky and unlock her, will help you, but not as a team, just as a very good overall character. Uh, the same actually goes for Loki. He is a pretty decent character with a very early unlock at 45 shards. Or cheap unlock rather and uh unfortunately not accessible in the earliest stages of the game mystic node so by the time you actually build a team that can do the mystic uh nodes you you probably either have unlocked loki accidentally or are nowhere near unlocking him he's not going to be the best uh character for you to get there are, however, three characters in stores, uh, Thor being in the raid store, uh, Heimdall being in the arena store, and Sif being in the war store. Great. Uh, the Thor being in the raid store makes him slightly problematic for uh, newer players because you don't get much raid credits, and when you do, Thor himself doesn't actually do anything for you he really does need to be around his team he's an adequate character on his own he doesn't really serve as an avenger but ultimately he's okay heimdall is available in the arena store and if you didn't know this the arena store has such amazing characters necessary for unlock as anyone but heimdall so he's an okay brawler with a couple of cool abilities. He does a decent amount of damage, but again, outside of his team, you don't quite get the advantage of the entire team not being able to be blinded or uh, a aversion to heal blocks. So it, it's he doesn't do much. He's just another generic damage dealer in the early stages of the game, and the arena store credits are probably better off being used on characters like Vulture or Drax or even Juggernaut in order to make sure that you're unlocking characters that will unlock a legendary that's incredibly important to your progression. Uh, moving into the last character is Sif. She's available in the War Store, and I gotta say, it doesn't feel good to be spending war credits that are particularly hard to come by in the early stages of the game, and even somewhat in the late stages of the game, on a generic tank on a team where it's unlikely you're going to be unlocking or being able to work on many of the characters that easily. She is an okay tank. Uh, she's clearly a better tank on her team, but if you look at it from the perspective of characters like Thor, Heimdall, and Sif alone as the three characters you can farm early, that team is okay. 
not good, not great, not grand, but okay. You really can't complete the Asgardian teams, and that's why, as far as availability concerned, they are functionally an end game team. Uh, you shouldn't be worried too much about uh, farming them early. They might be able to help you proceed and, and be strong enough in arena in the very early stages of the game, but because you can't progress and grow them as a team, uh, and because the effort it takes to work on them as a team takes away players who are able to work towards characters like Star-Lord or Magneto are going to have a pretty decent chance against you and you're going to kind of run out of luck early. But that said, we can take a moment and talk about their usefulness. Now, it goes without saying that they are necessary for a character unlock. They unlock Black Bolt, one of the best damage dealing characters in the game a hard counter to characters like Ultron and Minerva and of course Nebula and uh, a phenomenal all-around character that said Black Bolt uh, isn't what's the word necessary for any content in the game that a early game player would need uh, having access to Black Bolt uh, first compared to some of the other legendaries will probably end up uh, hurting you a little as Black Bolt himself can't really carry an entire raid team. Uh, he will be adequate at countering like Hydra on war and maybe even the Asgardians themselves, but ultimately he is an endgame character. This team ends up being slightly more of an endgame team and any early investment you have, as with a lot of things, only matters as far as you can access them to be able to grow them both in stars as well as gear and make them overall a stronger team. I think you lose a little bit of opportunity working on them there. Uh, but now let's talk about it a little differently, because as an entire team, they do have one incredibly valuable use, and that is that they are phenomenal on both sides of war. In early stages of war, as you're progressing and building up your roster, they are an absolutely tremendous defense team with uh, very few specific answers. So the sooner you get this team and place them on war defense, the more likely it is that you're going to get defensive wins as people come in and try to beat them because they don't quite have the answers because their rosters like yours are very sporadic. That said, as you progress further and further, uh, into the game and you're facing people who are also progressing it's more likely that they are capable of victory and then you have a choice between using them as a very good defense team or switching them over to offense and using them to hard counter a handful of other teams like the hydra team with red skull or some ultron fights that's up to you the benefit of the Asgardians is that they are great on both sides of the war. They are particularly good right now on defense, but as that changes, they won't lose value. They will just be more flexible, if that makes sense. They aren't a raid team. Uh, as a matter of fact, as of right now, there are no tags in the game for Asgardian in any raid, so it doesn't really help you. There are mystic characters, so anything that requires mystic you'll be okay, but ultimately, you could probably get away with just using characters like Hela or Loki as opposed to using the entire Asgardian team, so when it comes to raids, they are not necessary. Useful? Somewhat, but at no point will uh, you require the Asgardians for any content that's currently in the game uh, regarding raids. Uh, the same kind of goes for campaigns, with one exception. They are an adequate team for completing the mystic nodes but if you can't already complete the mystic campaign uh, you had to get lucky or spend some money to get loki uh, it's not as good as some of the other options you have for example before this team even came out there were kind of mishmash versions of teams that were able to do that so even though mystic campaign might have gotten easier with the creation of this team it is in by no means necessary to complete any or all of the fights. Uh, they are useful, they are a great team, but as far as how early getting them will improve your roster, I would have to say uh, it won't, almost in any way. Uh, which leads us to our third point, which is of course, breakpoints of investment. Now, we're going to use this as an entire team and not as individual characters, but I will mention anything as it comes up. 
looking kind of around as a team. We'll start with Sif, as she is technically the worst character. She is an adequate tank. Uh, a lot of these characters' abilities come uh, in waves based on where they're used, like war or something. But for her, she pretty much just heals herself based on the number of Asgardians. She has a high block chance. When it comes to tier fours, this is her magnum opus. This is the most important thing you could put on her because her entire job is not to do damage. Her entire job is to take enough damage that Thor gets to use his passive frequently. So high block chance, deflex, which are also blocks, and healing self every turn based on the number of Asgardians. This is probably one of the best tier four investments you can put into her. Everything else, as you check real quick, is just increased damage, but she doesn't quite do a lot of damage to begin with, so the rest of the tier fours on her aren't necessary. They are luxuries, or as I like to call them, vanity investments. She's, again, only necessary as far as taunting long enough that Thor can use his ability, so her breakpoint at right around here for me is more than adequate compared to maybe an Umbaku or a Luke Cage or a tank that gets a little bit more value for when you invest in them. Moving into Loki, Loki's another character where he is so good without tier fours that uh, you get to choose whether you invest in them. God of Mischief being one of the coolest ones. Uh, right now, he applies 20% uh, resistant debuff to every character it just happens when it spawns and he gives mystic control allies 20 percent focus uh, going up to 30 is great if you notice that the minus 20 percent that they're all receiving the second the fight starts isn't enough i don't think i've run into that many problems so i've never even considered investing in this but i know plenty of people who have uh, i don't know if it's beneficial because i've never done it it's kind of like how Star Wars passive, you don't necessarily know how beneficial it is because you don't know what the opposite's going to be, but I've never really had to invest in him. He's pretty much done everything he's needed to regarding this on his own. Uh, mirror image, I actually share an opinion with Casino on this. I like the idea of the mirror images uh, sticking around as opposed to just taking up the damage and when all of my characters are stealth, it feels like they're gonna they're gonna die quickly. They do do a decent amount of damage. Um, ultimately, they're okay. Uh, I never have ever needed to invest in this, and I don't feel like I need to now. There might be a specific situation in which it breaks uh, everything open, like on war defense, but I haven't really had any problems. I'm still getting more defensive victories or enough punch downs that I feel like the team's gonna win no matter what. That said, this is a totally useful investment. Uh, these are characters like I like to advocate for because the amount of points you put into them make them stronger, not uh, are a requirement. And that's why I don't really like required tier fours. I like tier fours that you feel the growth from a character, which you might see in something like Mind Control. This is another one that I have not necessarily invested in. Uh, mostly because I haven't really noticed the difference between one or two target being hit. I tend to use Loki uh, in conjunction with Captain Marvel or Hela, and I don't actually want that character dying. I want that character to stick the defense down so that when Hela takes her turn, she can spread it to everybody. Uh, and a lot of times, especially in, in Endgame Arena or even in War, uh, that the characters are so strong that that defense down double call will possibly even kill the character. So not to say that's right or wrong. I have control over it. Uh, I've never actually needed it. I've always felt like it, whether it was one or two characters being called on the assist, it still did an adequate job of what it was supposed to do. And ultimately that was okay, but no shame in chain in that extra 25% in the same argument as black Panther. Um, if you want to make sure it happens, feel free to invest. I just haven't felt the need to. And Eldritch Bow, no notes, unnecessary. Getting a 40% and 50% chance is not a meaningful enough chance. It's coin flip to almost a coin flip as far as that's concerned. No real need to invest there. Heimdall, 
this is gonna be different. Uh, I don't like him as a character. Uh, I don't think extra focus uh, for self and Asgardians is necessary, uh, more so than he already gives, 20 to 30. I think that's usually an adequate amount. Uh, and I also have a real problem with investing in anything that says on war defense or on war offense. Uh, I I feel like those are temporary investments and uh, the more resources you have, the more money you've spent, the more tier fours you, you gain, uh, these become a little bit easier to invest in because you know you're going to get more. But for some players who uh, maybe don't get that many resources, I feel like anything that is only good in war uh, versus something that's good in raids or some game mode that you absolutely positively uh, will see the value in as opposed to war defense, I, I just don't enjoy it. I always feel a little bit dirty putting tier four investments in characters like this. That said, if you want to, it's here. Uh, it is a good in increase, apply defense up to all as guardian allies for two turns. Uh, as opposed to just three so could be useful unless someone's using Ultron then it's probably gonna kill that character but who's to say as far as everything else you'll check it is all damage so goes under the tier 4 rule of damage damage 75% uh, to 100% always clear this is the one that I do think could be relevant that said I don't know how many fights you would anticipate using this so if you do use this as a raid team or if a raid comes out in the future where they're going to be better as a raid team than anything else this might be a mandatory upgrade for him to make sure that when he uses this attack all of your heal block characters get cleansed from it uh, that might be worth it right now i don't know many teams that are used to beat the asgardians that are constantly applying heal block i also don't know many situations you're going to be putting your asgardians in where heal block is going to be an issue uh, this is really what that ability is it's that flip stealth so I don't think tier fours are mandatory on this, but they're totally fine. And again, damage. Uh, unless damage is what you're missing, I don't ever really advocate for investing in tier fours that only improve damage. Again, unless that's what you need from the character, like Black Bolt. Uh, Thor. Thor is a little bit different. Uh, God of Thunder increases the amount of damage that he does uh, to all characters, which is pretty solid it's a five percent base damage increase total going from 10 to 15 useful uh it's also 20 percent extra damage when he does gain his fifth charge uh, it doesn't feel like much but it's still 25 percent extra damage and it's also increased on all of his other abilities it doesn't need to be in war <laughs> uh all in all pretty solid uh the fact that he's getting speed meter you don't need this investment but since this is one of thor's most important features you can invest in it and know that thor is going to be doing what he's supposed to do which is hurt people when they hurt his friends everything else uh is of course just damage so it is totally worth it this 10 percent chance to apply stun mm, again same rules 10 percent extra 40 to 50 it's up to you uh, but the 50 percent extra damage does mean a lot uh hammer throw gains a guaranteed chain but because it's a throne chain and not a handle chain it travels a little bit weird uh, it is a good chunk of extra damage though so since he is the damage dealer on the team uh, you can feel free to invest in these but again they're just damage uh, and the last character is hella Hela is amazing uh, any tier 4 you put into hella is great i don't have to go into detail i'm not even going to show you the kits uh, as a matter of fact no regrets at all just put them all in uh in general though i will say uh, they don't need them immediately i have a gear tier 14 hella uh, and i've invested in her as time has progressed i obviously haven't invested in black blade yet but she is a cosmic mystic controller that does a ton of damage and comes with a greg the best character in the game so i do kind of keep track of where i want my greg to be by investing in hella this is of course making sure that the passive is on point this is of course the ultimate so i want to make sure that greg does a decent amount of damage that greg does heal the most uh injured non-summon as guardian which let's be clear is usually just hella uh, i want all of that from him so i put all 
the investments in her to make sure that works out. I haven't necessarily needed Black Blade yet, but that's just going to be a matter of time. Her overall kit is phenomenal. Uh, and you will use her outside of the Asgardian teams. So when you look at what the abilities do, ultimately, you can kind of pay attention to the fact that on War Defense, this is the only tier four that you desperately need in order to make sure that uh, everyone is doing their job uh, as much as they can. Everything else is just increased damage, uh, spreading four negative effects as opposed to three. It, it just makes her kit work better. She's all around a great character outside and inside her team. Uh, I don't believe there's a single tier four investment that you will ever regret. I think the only thing you might regret is how early you put them in. For example, if you have a three star Hela uh, and you're starting to spend your tier fours on her that early, you may not necessarily see some of the dividends from that value. Other than that, I don't know how else to say it. I think that the Asgardian team is absolutely phenomenal i think that at 50k the team starts doing what it's supposed to do and every 50k you add to the team they are just better at it uh of course i think that the number i like to go to immediately is about 150k where each character is uh 30k power that's usually around five star uh 6664 on the abilities with a handful of maybe hella or Thor tier fours, if you choose to, maybe a couple red stars here or there, gear tier 10, 11 or so. Uh, once they're about 150k, this team is a phenomenal blitz team, phenomenal war defense team, requires specific responses, useful individual characters, and as a full team for whatever side of any fight you want to take, including mystic fights in Greek raids. Uh, and because of that, and the fact that they do unlock one of the better characters in the game, even though uh, it's not early, and even though it's not that important to get early, this is uh, one of, as of right now, the very few S-tier teams in the game. Uh, they are very set it and forget it. You don't uh, have to do anything very specifically to make them good. They are as a team benefit each other individually, even though Hela, Hela is so strong, she makes Sif good by, by standing next to her, um, mostly because Greg might die from a chain. But this team is a perfect example of what good team design kind of looks like, uh, where they work so much better uh, together than independently. Uh, they feel so important to a lot of stages of the game. And if they were, necessary for a raid necessary specifically uh, or if they added additional character to give them maybe a healer like a jane foster thor or korg or something they might end up being uh, all in all one of the best teams in the game so that's it for my first s team thank you guys so much for watching comment below and let me know what you think about the asgardians whether you started farming them early whether they're helping you now whether you notice that may not have been a great idea or whether you think that uh, it is a great idea and try to prove me wrong. I'm totally fine with that either. So uh, thank you guys so much. Again, have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangeli, and I'll catch you later.